So what are the issues and challenges faced by the banking industry? So the first and most important issue that is faced here by the banking industry is competition within banks. So we have seen that there is a large diversification of banks and the structures have undergone a lot of change. So now we are reasonably getting into a, a system where there are large universal banks with the public in the public sector like State Bank of India and the bigger bank, banks which have come about now like your Union Bank of India then <clears throat> the merged entities that have come about then the private sector banks which are large banks like your ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, then Axis Bank etc. Then Kotak Mahindra Bank is also one of them. Then uh, you have the entire foreign banking structure. Then there is this continuing consolidation between the private sector banks and the public sector banks, which is happening. Even recently, we had Lakshmi Vilas Bank taken over by uh, DBS Development Bank of Singapore, etc. So even public sector banks, this is not the end. There could be another round of uh, mergers that could happen. So the consolidation is something which is happening there. Then the second thing is specialized banks are being also set up like your small finance bank basically to deal with the MSMEs, uh, then agriculture, agricultural industry, etc. Then payment banks solely to deal with the payments, remittances, etc. Then urban cooperative banks basically to fulfill the credit needs in the semi-urban and urban locations uh, using the cooperative structure. Then in the rural area, you have the RRBs and the consolidated the regional rural banks which are now financially much stronger and better than the uh, RRBs when they were about 200. Then you have digital payment service providers also who are filling in the gaps. So in this diversified sector, sector between banks there still exists a lot of competition that is there which is which requires a particular attention to be paid by the banks so that their continuing profitability deposits and other things have to be retained. Then the increasing demand of customers for better customer service and the diversity of products and services that are available are making the banks forced into accepting technology, imbibing technology and providing technological solutions. So that's the reason why in the fintech space, <clears throat> there is a lot of uh, action which is initiated by the banks and where the banks are beneficiaries of this. So technology has also uh, made uh, competition between the banks intense. Earlier you had only foreign banks who, have, who were having all kinds of products. Now you have all kinds of products and technology supports uh, for better customer service from all kinds of categories of banks. So that's a challenge where this competition has become more intensified. Then. The pressure in terms of attracting retail customers is more because granting retail loans, which are of a high, uh, what is the rate of interest, the personal loan segment, then home loan segment, these have all become very attractive and the focus is not on big industry where there is a lot of NBA problem, but in the retail customers where uh, they, the banks feel that there is an opportunity and also the recoverability is better and the volume uh, of hit that they could take is also comparatively slow. So, the attraction of retail customers uh, is something which is uh, driving a lot of competition. Then greater focus on fee-based businesses uh, like third-party product sale, like insurance, mutual fund, investment management, etc. This has become the focus because fund-based business is, is uh, hit by the risks that are there uh, with the business cycle, etc. But in case of the fee-based business, it's continuous provided you are able to drive the right kind of marketing force. So these are the competition related challenges. The second most important thing is that is in relation to the banking sector, but now the non-banking sector also has become a big competition for the banking system. There are different classes of NBFCs offering products which are suited to customers needs, where parallelly banks have also now embarked upon those areas like asset financing, then investment management, then loans traditionally banks and non-banks have been taking into account. The second important aspect that is a problem for banks is this increasing disintermediation. That is earlier <clears throat> a saver and the borrower to be brought closer by the institution which is a bank. So that was important where bank is acting as an intermediary. Now with the peer-to-peer -peer lending pl platforms and other things are coming up the borrower and the saver are directly brought together and there is this crowdfunding or this individual loans uh, which are happening through these platforms. So 
once these platforms are there the re the reason why they should come to bank has become uh, what is it the need for bank has become uh, negative so if there is an increase in the peer to peer lending and then the bank will be hit because the deposits are also going to be affected and the lending portfolio is also going to be disturbed then however the non banking financial sector is still being looked at as a last mile uh, delivery channel for banking sectors and the lending by banks to non banking financial companies has increased there and some of the lending that is done for priority is also being considered for priority sector lending then as i told you fintechs and big technologies are causing digital disruptions and challenging the banks by entering the financial service in the in services industry and what are the products that they are offering or solutions that they are marketing to be providing one is offering payment and remittance services then innovative channels like peer to peer lending crowd funding trade finance account aggregation wealth management and data networking these are all being provided then artificial intelligence and machine learning systems are also being used to predict consumer behavior push products which are appropriate etc then the move to digital payment systems and promoting innovations in that area is also something which is hindering the banking operations then growth in mobile and electronic transactions are also increasing the risk which is resulting in the hit taken by the banks with zero liability clauses and other things coming about then the more appropriate model that is being adopted is a fintech developed so institution develops a solution then the banks uh, buy that solution and offer that solution to the customers the other thing that is being done is banks themselves are promoting the startups which are involved in fintech so that uh, once they make something uh, the bank will have a proprietary right over it but in all this technology that is there we are the banks are subject to greater amount of operational risk because of system failures today if there is no power then automatically the entire uh, online system will have a problem you don't have mobile network connectivity then payment systems and other things and your mobile payment systems will be affected and most importantly the volume of cyber crimes and the value of these crimes have grown many fold which is creating a problem for customers and also creating a problem for the banks and more importantly affecting the trust then <clears throat> the other important problem or the issue faced by the banking system is the growing amount of non performing assets where the loans are turning bad and once the loans turn bad automatically the profitability is affected then the capital adequacy is affected then there is a need for recapitalization etc then recovery of this money will become a problem so uh, overall the institutional stability will be affected and there could be instances where the bank will may fail also so for remedying this you need to have sound lending principles of safety liquidity profitability etc then diversification of loan then better credit appraisal where you can use the credit and information systems etc take up technical feasibility expertise and managerial capability then economic viability and ability to generate returns so all this have to be so better credit appraisal can reduce the extent of non performing assets then adequate amount of quantum of finance at the appropriate time is what is important but not a huge amount of lending just because they want to push credit they shouldn't be lending left right and center then it is at the documentation stage where a lot of problem is there which makes loans unrecoverable sometimes while they are taking the title deed they don't see the original whether it's original or not they don't check whether the security of loan is valid or not so those kind of systems if they are there then the extent of non performing assets can be checked then one the moment you give a loan for a purpose ensuring monitoring for seeing whether it is end use of it is proper and whether the payment is proper if that is uh, periodically kept pace with uh, then probably you will have lesser instance of non performing assets becoming doubtful and uh, loss assets eventually then even before an asset becomes non performing asset treat it as a stressed asset and that is the reason why rbi has given directions relating to stress at asset management so that uh, before they become bad you try to uh, set right the system so that uh, you get good recoveries then better systems and internal controls are also important for dealing with this non performing assets then from the recovery perspective the channels that are there for recovering non performing assets amounts is one where you are taking uh, uh, post dated checks 
138 proceedings can be used where there is a secured loan you can use the recourse that is available which is under the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act 2002 there are through two channels here one is section 13 proceedings of enforcement of security interest where you give them a notice then subsequently they don't respond and pay up the whole amount you take over possession of the security then you put it to auction and then realize whatever amounts that you are able to realize if there is surplus you pay it up to the customer if there is a shortage that will be an unsecured portion which you can recover through the debt recovery tribunal then second thing is asset reconstruction where you can assign the loans to an asset reconstruction company who will salvage whatever portion they are able to recover then change the management etc so corporate resolution can be done through the asset reconstruction company then debt recovery tribunal is the channel which is used basically for the purpose of uh, ensuring recovery in case of unsecured loans then the ibc has enabled uh, providing another option for non performing asset resolution through the process called corporate insolvency resolution process so that has been uh, working better because the management power itself is being taken over by the committee of creditors afterwards assigned to an insolvency resolution professional so the authority of holding a company will be lost once the cirp process is triggered under the ibc because of which the, the promoters and the management are interested more in paying out the dues rather than allowing them to be making uh, getting transformed into non performing assets then another important area where the challenge is faced by the banking system is frauds where crores of money are lost through frauds and the amount has been in the increase especially because of the increase in cyber crimes and this is in, in turn resulting because of the increased use of electronic payments internet banking and mobile payments without understanding the security implications of use then data theft and compromise is also something which is very common these days then the mechanisms to deal with them are basically consumer education then having better information security systems then zero liability clauses uh, uh, then cyber insurance and fraud insurance then greater internal controls uh, to ensure that the systems are appropriate and risk limits are specified then closer monitoring and better risk management is also an important area to keep uh, a check on the extent of frauds then the biggest problem in the urban cooperative sector and even the private banking sector is the corporate governance uh, standards in fact yes bank uh, uh, had a big corporate governance issue because of which the institution almost went to the brink of being uh, uh, what is it um, going into extreme difficulties it was salvaged subsequently because of the state bank of india's capital intervention so the competence and effectiveness of the board is something which is very important and what we find in some of the banks especially in the private sector is dominance of individuals like your kotak mahindra uh, bank or your axis bank etc there is individuals who are assuming more importance when compared to the board then the quality of board discussions is very poor and not very focused then the role of board in terms of cyber security and technology is not there because that competence whether the board has or not we are not aware that. so that's that's an issue then the kind of policy decisions that are being taken by them then most importantly the related party transactions and collected connected lending is something which is a problem in fact the entire banking regulation and system has come about basically to deal with this original problem and even now we have problems of the banks lending for their own board members their own uh, management and the relatives relating to them and then subsequently they are turning bad which is resulting in a problem so these are all issues relating to corporate governance then compliance with the regulation is a very important aspect where audit and other things will also come into play so though the requirements are there for concurrent audit internal audit statutory audit and periodic re reporting of these uh, exceptions in relation to audit uh, still it has not reached that level of uh, it has not reached that given that level of comfort where the reliance can be exclusively placed on them and they can be trusted with that uh, uh, responsibility still there is a need for rbi to keep uh, going for inspections to get to counter check the auditors as well then the risk management systems of the banks also need to be 
uh, updated and kept in trend with the changing risk profile. Then customer service is another area which has always been a concern as far as banks are concerned. So now with the freedom that is available for moving from one bank to another or from bank to an NBFC, etc., it's very difficult to have that kind of customer loyalty and retention. So how do banks deal with this is a very important issue. Then greater emphasis on technology in service delay, delivery. Then you now don't have brick, brick and mortar branches. You have digital kiosks and uh, non-face-to-face -face kind of an interaction. So how are you going to ensure that the level of service is commensurate with what uh, is intended to be there? That is a challenge. Then uh, rising expectations and the e increasing number of complaints are putting a pressure on the banking ombudsman system also. Then misselling is a very rampant thing that is there, which is eroding the trust of the bank as a uh, fiduciary responsibility that is being entrusted with them. That is taking a hit because of the mis-selling of insurance, investment products, mutual funds, etc. So basically, compliance with code of commitment, then faster and effective resolution of grievances at the bank's own level, and uh, to be filled in by the integrated ombudsman of RBA is the way to ensure that the, the customer service levels are continuing to be maintained. Then the regulation and supervision is also becoming an area which is very, very important challenge because the complexity of the businesses, the risks that are uh, involved are necessary that the regulator is also improving in terms of its capability, in terms of understanding the nuances of businesses and having the supervisory and regulatory system keeping pace with the kind of products and the systems that are there in the banks. So from that point of view, the regulation and supervision also needs to be tuned. So though we have a foreground mechanism involving on-site, off-site, market intelligence and statutory audit reports, the emphasis is now not on complete inspections, but more on risk-based supervision. And we are focusing on large and systemically important entities and systems rather than on each individual being treated as a similar individual. Then we are trying to involve uh, technology in the uh, tools uh, in the supervision, which is again referred to as soup tech or uh, supervisory technology. Then early detection of non-compliance and penal action is something which is uh, attempted. Then for, pre for preventing failures, etc., we have prompt corrective action systems uh, through transparent mechanisms and trigger points, which is there for banks and NBFCs. Then we have, uh, there is a need for strengthening the deposit insurance regime. One aspect of it is in terms of increasing the coverage of deposit insurance, which has been done from 1 lakh to 5 lakh. But there, are also, there is also a need for making the deposit insurance premium linked to the risk that is associated in the entity rather than a uh, uniform uh, risk pricing that is presently in vogue. So there is an act also which is there contemplated, but that has not yet come. So that regulation and supervision also needs to be kept pace with them. Then the capital adequacy of the bank has to be constantly improved because capital is the risk protection that a bank can have. So the higher the amount of capital, the better will be the risk profile. Then with the increasing international operations and having the international financial centers within the countries, etc., the forex risk and the rate fluctuations are having an impact on the forex risk management uh, and also on the profitability of the banks. Then with the higher level of inflation, uh, the yields in government securities, which is another important portfolio of the bank, that is also impacting the profitability of the banks. Then with the rates of interest lesser than the inflation rate, there is actually a negative real rate for people. And this is disincentivizing people from keeping deposits with the bank. And when the deposits tend to fall, automatically the credit and lending portfolio and investment portfolio will be affected. So the continuous stress is there on the profitability of banks. And these are all the various challenges and issues that are there as far as the banking is concerned as things stand now. So this is one area which I thought I will discuss with you all.